Welcome to Silent Tech. In this video, I'll walk you through the installation of CarDroid ROM based on Android 15 on the Xiaomi Pad 6. You'll get a clear step-by-step -step guide, a quick look at the standout features, and a hands-on performance review, so you can decide if it's the right upgrade for you. So without any delay, let's get started. First, open your browser and search for CarDroid ROM. Click on the official website. Now, hit download for your device. In the search box, type PIPA. That's the code name for Xiaomi Pad 6. Click on Pad 6, then tap Download Latest Version. This will redirect you to SourceForge. After a short wait, the download will start automatically. This is the vanilla build, so we'll need GApps too. Search for Nick GApps. Click on the first link, then hit Download. Click Download Now. Choose Releases, then Android 15, then the latest version. You'll see all the GApps variants. I usually go with Core, just Play Store, no extra Google bloatware. After a few seconds, your download will begin. Now, you'll need three more images for ADB sideload. Download links for these are on my Telegram channel. Link is in the description. After downloading all five files, go to your Pad 6 and connect it to your PC using a USB cable. Restart your device. While restarting, hold the volume down button. Your Pad 6 will boot into fast boot mode. On your PC, open a new tab, go to your C drive and, and open the Platform Tools folder. Wait, if you don't have the Platform Tools folder, your PC isn't ready for flashing. To prepare it, watch my previous video. I've explained everything there. Once you're ready, come back to this video. In the location box, Taish type CMD. Command prompt will appear. Go to your downloads folder, click on CMD in the taskbar, and start flashing. Type fastboot flash boot, then drag and drop the boot image. Hit enter. Next, fastboot flash vendor boot, drag and drutter. Op the vendor image. Hit enter. Fastboot flash DTBO, drag and drop the DTBO image. Hit enter. After flashing, type Fastboot Reboot Recovery. Hit Enter. Your Pad 6 will now boot into recovery mode. In Recovery, choose Factory Reset, then Format Data. Go back to the main menu, click on Apply Update, then Apply from ADB. On your PC, type ADB Sideload, then drag and drop the car droid ROM. Hit Enter. Flashing will begin. It might get stuck at 47%. Don't panic. That's normal. Once it's done, Recovery will ask if you want to flash additional packages. Choose Yes. Recovery will restart. Again, choose Apply Update, then Apply from ADB. On CMD, type ADB Sideload, then drag and drop the GApps. Hit Enter. After flashing, just hit Reboot System. On first boot, it'll take some time, but soon you'll see the Car Droid logo. Let me set it up now so we can dive into the review and performance testing. So, Pad 6 is ready for testing. As you can see, animations are smooth, responsive, and fluid. In the control center, I've made the background slightly transparent, just like Android 16. You can even add a screen refresh rate toggle here. I've also changed the toggle animation, because on CarDroid, you can customize almost everything. If I show you every customization, this video will get way too long. So let's keep it focused. In settings, after a short scroll, you'll find car droid settings. Here, you can tweak everything. Clock position, network traffic indicators, battery icon styles, and more. As you can see, I've customized the toggle animation. You can also change the screen off animation. Pretty cool, right? Now let's move to the highlight tweaks. In miscellaneous, you'll find options like unlocking higher FPS in games. Very useful. In the battery section, you get charging control. Great if you often forget your device on charge. And under battery information, you can check your maximum battery capacity. App opening and closing animations, smooth. You can even open apps in freeform mode, and I didn't notice any limit on how many apps you can run this way. Now, let's talk performance scores. In Geekbench, we got 640 in single core and 2 to 147 in multi core. In 3D Mark, we scored 3547 with an average FPS of 21.24. And in Antutu benchmark, we hit 589 744. If you want a deep analysis, 
you can check every score in detail. Now, let's move to actual gaming performance. Let's open BGMI, but before we start, it's 10.33 p.m. and the battery is at 53%. Let's play BGMI and check how much battery drains. In graphics settings, we have Smooth Plus Ultra and Extreme options. That means 120 FPS support. Other settings only go up to 60 FPS. For this test, I'll play on 120 FPS settings. To show FPS, I've added BGMI to GameSpace and enabled the FPS meter. In the spawn island, FPS fluctuates between 80 and 100. On the map, it jumps to 100 to 114 FPS. After some time, let's exit the game. It's now 10.51 p.m. So after 18 minutes of gameplay, battery dropped by just 4%. Also, I accidentally disabled the taskbar feature in launcher settings, but it works perfectly fine. And that's it for today's video. If this helped you, give it a big thumbs up and, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next one. Stay tuned.